Good morning, Mike. What would you like to talk about? Well, I tell you what. Now, let's first let me first let me first jump in and, <laughs> and, and and help you guys with the understanding of the difference between Peyton and McCarthy. Please. And, and, and Peyton, I, I think Peyton and a whole bunch of coaches because I hear you guys going to get the numbers and talking about uh, uh, how how tantamount equal to the numbers are both guys. But the reality is, the reality is, you it, that's looking at the high. Oh, they got one Super Bowl. They haven't been back in a long time. They both had uh, some pretty good generational quarterbacks, and, and, and they won. Here's the difference that you have to understand that I think puts Sean Payton above it all. Look at the success that Sean Payton has had without his best players. Without Michael Thomas, without Drew Brees, he still keeps them competitive. They beat the champs twice this year without his best players. That's what we're talking about. Without our best players, we lost every darn game. That's just the reality. We lost every darn game. I had a stop animal on the show as an emotional support dog. Are you joking? That's what I'm talking about. Let me slow down, Michael. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. <laughs> now, the Cowboys you know, did win in Minnesota, but that's it. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying. Yes. I'm watching. Hey, you got to look at coaches in that vein, too. Kyle Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan wins with anybody. That's what, what you're looking at. Sean Payton has won with some of anybody at quarterback, at quarterback, yes. At quarterback, kind of extrapolated and said, whoa, boy, if we won with anybody and we get him some good players, boy, what can he do with that? Yes, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Sean Payton did his upgrade. I, you know, I, I'm just going to be real with you. That's just the real. But, but, Mike, Shanahan doesn't win with any quarterback. He can't win without Jimmy. Shanahan has won. Shanahan, Shanahan won with with, with, with uh, Nick Eden or whatever Nick, whatever that Nick dude was, Nick Mullins. That's right. He had he, he had with Nick Mullins. He had them in every game. With no matter who played quarterback, they were with they were in every game and playing some pretty good teams. And I thought that was amazing. I look at those things because I'm always saying, man, if the Cowboys would have had him all the time, I, 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 I hate. I, I get so tired of studying and, and looking at guys. That, well, we would have had him. Where is it? Might get your mind off that. But now I can put my mind back on Sean Payton as a possibility. I don't know when it's going to happen, but as a possibility, I can put my mind back on it. Okay, you have to try and do this as 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 as, as much as possible. You know Jerry Jones better than anybody. What is he thinking right now? <laughs> what is he? Do you call if you call him and you said, "What's up, boss?" What is he gonna say to you? Let me let me tell you what. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you how first year it is. There, waiting is not necessary. Waiting is not a part of his DNA. If he thinks there's something that he can make it happen and, 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 and it needs to happen, he's going to try to pull it off right now. This whole thing, uh, uh, Sean, when, when, when you and I went texting back and forth, and when I say, "What's going on with Jerry?" You know, because I, I, I got to wait on it all to come from you, you guys. It comes from you guys. It starts on the national team. So I'm like, let me try to get ahead of this stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm calling. So I'll tell you something. What's going on with the interview? What do I got to prepare for out here? Yeah. What did he say? What's going on? Yeah. And, what did you, know and what did you hear in that interview? <laughs> Sean. Yeah. Did I lose you? Yeah, I lost it. What'd you say? I said, I, and what did you hear in that interview with Jerry? Did it live up what I told you on last Friday? Yes, yes, yes. And, 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 and right, and, and remember when you said when you said, well, uh, I hadn't heard it, and I was going on another show with somebody. I said, man, you say yeah, Jerry, Jerry pushed it back and everything. So I hadn't heard it, and then he came on, and then right after that, I had to go on, and I hadn't heard the interview because I was doing something else. And somebody asked me about it. Yeah. They said, I said, you know what? I just talked to my guy that does the interview, and he, he told me that they were going to have the interview, but I hadn't heard it. But he told me what, you know, Jerry wasn't committed to uh, to coach. And I said, yeah, I, I understand that. See, right now, man, we, when, when Dak got up and spoke about the refs, right, everybody 
they really were going to try to take that and do some things at that. You know, man, Dodgers is okay and people to throw at the rest of the I said, stop it, guys. Stop, 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 stop. We're asking this man to go up there his raw emotions, his rawest of raw emotions. And, 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 he, and he, he's hurt. He's thinking after all he's fought back from with the pain of that leg and now the team is throwing stuff at him and all that at his team. And so he went on that little rant about these guys putting it all in and, oh, okay, then, oh, it was at the refs. Okay, okay, well, applaud that because he's upset here. You know, they tried to turn that into, I guess, Dak ain't squeaky clean. Dak talking about you should be throwing stuff at the refs. That's just the emotion. That's just the emotion. Jerry coming on, you know, and, and, and not giving those ringing endorsements, it's more than emotions. Because billionaires like that, they're so used to having success, and they refuse to wait forever to get it. If there's any chance of anything happening, any little slim bim chance, Jerry's going to try to move on it sooner than later. I haven't talked to Jerry. I don't know anything about it. I'm just telling you, those guys like that, you don't get to where you got to where they are waiting. You just don't do it. They go and get it now. So if there's any possibility, I hear you guys saying making him, he's a lame go is Mike McCarthy the lame duck coach this year. If there's any possibility, they don't necessarily want to wait the next year. Yeah, is that is that fair to McCarthy to do that to him? Dude, <laughs> what did Tony Romo say? This I don't is know. a meritocracy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what this is, buddy. And and you're going out on the first round. All things are fair. All things. Stop talking about what's fair. Fair. I, I, I don't even live in the word fair. <laughs> I live in the word just. I'm serious, man. Everybody wants what's fair. You just feel what's fair. Everybody doesn't deserve what's fair. What's fair says I'm giving everybody a dime. All right, you get a dime, you get a dime, you get a dime. What if you did a dime worth of work and he did two cents worth of work? Why should I give him a dime? Does that mean I'm being fair or does that mean I'm being unfair? I want to be just. You get a dime. You did two damn cents and that's what you get. Two cents. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If you do your work, then you don't have to worry about fair. You're going to be treated just. Do your work. Don't get kicked out in the first round. You don't be talking about fair. You'll be saying, give me what's just. Give me what's mine. I live on just, not fair. Michael Irvin right here on Sean and RJ every Wednesday, 105.3 The Fan. Is there a price that's too much to pay compensation-wise, Michael. Oh, we want your first and your second. We want this or that. Do you do you think that Jerry, with his own personal window, uh, would have a price that's too much to pay? Because you got to trade for Sean Payton. Let's, let's 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 go a little deeper in this. The price obviously was too high with what they wanted. You need to cut it even before. So somebody, I ain't saying nothing, and I ain't talked to Jerry, nor have I talked to Sean. Hey, and I love Sean Payton, but I ain't talked to him either. But now I'm going to tell you something. The price was already too high. You can already mark that. And, and, and now, now, now that Sean is no longer even coaching, does that put a little something, something in the price? Like, hey, you know, you ain't got him coaching anyway. He's already stepped away. You can't bring him back. You should just take this right here. And listen, you can't trade him anywhere because he ain't going to go anywhere. He'll only go to Dallas because he has this choice. You know what I mean? He has the choice now. So you you, you can try to trade him. And say, All right, they're going to give me two round, first rounds. All right, this team over here give me three first rounds. I'm not going over there. So if you only have one person to deal with. So you can leave him sitting on the sideline. Or you would take this first rounder and second rounder that Dallas is going to get, but you're not getting two first rounders and two second rounders like they gave up for Gruden. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Gruden got taken off the field. Sean was t- Sean got taken off the couch. What do you want to get this man off the couch? Mm. And you'll take anything because he wasn't on your sideline anyway. That, I, 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 I'm not push, I, I'm not saying that they didn't think that through. That's what that might be. What you're seeing, that great press conference Sean Pay did yesterday. You get to keep Dan Quinn or Kellen Moore here? I, 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 you mean if I got Sean Pay? No, no, no. Just just oh, say McCarthy oh. comes back. I know you're kicking Kellen to the oh. curve if Sean Payton comes. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to tell you, don't don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I'm not gonna kick him to the curb, but I'm gonna shake his hand and say thanks. But you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> but Kellen <laughs> coming, right Kellen coming back for this system or losing Dan Quinn. How do you look at the coordinators with the head coaching rumors? Well, we're going to sit here with with and sit pat at the head coaching job and. And Kellen Moore's coming back. That's a good. That's a good get. That's a good get for continuity there. You know what I mean? I, I still would love to keep Dan, just because you, you would love to keep him in the building because everybody talks about how great he is in communication, and we talked about that when he stepped in and used rap music to even try to communicate. That that meant to me a, a, a way above average communicator because he's coming down on the guy's level to get to them. That's the best way to communicate. So I would love to keep him in the building. But I understand now with Sean Payton doing what he's doing, there's nine jobs open. And Dan Quinn is, is, is definitely, definitely, I think he definitely should get one of those jobs. So, so we may lose him. We may lose him. And that's just the business. We can find some pretty good defensive coordinators out there. And I've heard people throw around Mike Zimmer, you know, yeah. coming in. Uh, and, and, and Zim, that's it being a coordinator also.